With LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers getting eliminated from the playoffs in the first round, something that really most basketball fans certainly would not have predicted at the start of the season after seeing them win the 2020 NBA championship, many collectors across the sports card hobby are beginning to sense that there is a changing of the guard in terms of who the next great NBA hobby star is going to be. For many, this is a bittersweet moment as longevity in our hobbies and athletes does bring a sense of normalcy to an otherwise chaotic world. Knowing that our athletes are going to be there to perform for us year in and year out is something that we can all count on and is something that really connects us to our past. For LeBron, for me, he's been in the league dominating the hobby status since I was a sophomore in high school. So even though I'm really not the biggest fan of him, much like Kobe, you can't really help but appreciate the accomplishments, the memories, and even the collecting over years and all that perspective and all the great hobby boxes that you used to open throughout the years hoping to hit one of their big cards. Now LeBron is still on top of the hobby for active players as he isn't really retiring as of today, but in 2021, a different player other than LeBron James will be adding to their legacy after winning a championship while also building their own case for being the next great hobby GOAT. We are now entering an era where it's really the first time in almost 35 years where the player dominating the NBA sports card marketplace is not named someone like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, or LeBron James. Notice I say active as the hobby is still being dominated by Michael Jordan, but that's another story. So with that being said, I want to run through eight NBA players who have the potential to be the next Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James for our hobby and will have the almost impossible task of elevating themselves in their career to meet the expectations as being the next great hobby superstar. But first, before I do that, I certainly want to thank all of you all for tuning into the channel. This is content that you like by all means. Do all the things that all the YouTubers ask, which is smash the like button and hit the subscribe button, as it really does help me out. As a result, I'll show you a picture of a baby guinea pig. First up on this list is Joel Embiid. Now, I know what you're thinking. No big man has ever dominated the hobby, ever. And the NBA as a whole has moved away from big men, making it extremely difficult for bigs to leave their mark. However, Joel is not your typical big man. Perhaps the most talented big that we have ever seen, those are Shaq's words, by the way, not mine. Joel has redefined what a big man can do in this league. Arguably, he was the 2021 NBA MVP had the big man not been sidelined due to injuries. The great thing that Joel also has going for him is that he doesn't have a lot of rookies. His rookies were produced in 2014, a time when Panini wasn't cranking the presses, making his rookies rare by today's standards. And let me just clarify, they're certainly not rare. Still, Joel is going to have to win multiple MVPs and multiple chips rather quickly in order to take over this alpha spot, and that's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Coming in at number 7 is Trey Young. Trey has all the makings of being the next baby Steph Curry. Now, not the next Steph Curry, but he's like Steph Curry light. Perhaps a bit more inefficient, but Trey, when confident, is one of the most explosive scorers and players in the league. His offensive firepower was on full display against the New York Knicks in the first round of the NBA playoffs. With the new head coach in Nick Millen, Trey is in a prime position to flourish as the primary ball handler and scorer in an up-and-coming Atlanta Hawks squad. The downside of Trey is, is his cards were produced in the modern-day Panini junk era. There's a number of downsides, but this is probably the biggest one. That's really no fault of his own, but really in order to be the hobby goat, you have to have not only the skills on the court, but also a perfect blend of rookie cards produced that can quickly become iconic as well. That's a challenge for Trey because put simply, he doesn't have a Topps Chrome or Bowman Chrome equivalent type of card that, that can become iconic because put simply, there are too many cards out there of Trey. Coming in at number six is Kawhi Leonard. Now that Kawhi Leonard has finally avoided being embarrassed in the playoffs in back-to-back -back years by finally edging out Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks, it's quickly looking like the Clippers may be the favorites to come out of the West this year. And if that happens, that brings him one step closer to ring number three and tying Steph Curry with the second most rings of active players on this short list of next hobby goats. Kawhi has all the makings on the court to be a hobby goat. 
He has a smooth offensive game and is capable of taking over at any point at will. He's already put together a string of clutch playoff performances that have added to his ever-growing legacy. The big problem with Kawhi is that he just doesn't have a personality. He's kind of boring. In order to be a GOAT today, you're going to have to be a leader with personality and an edginess. Good or bad, look, I like Kawhi. Actually, I really love Kawhi. He's one of the best dudes in the game as far as he keeps his mouth shut and he sticks to basketball and he's great at what he does. But oftentimes he seems too quiet and too non-controversial. Having said that, his legacy certainly isn't over and we might see him continue to climb the short list as he adds more hardware. The number five spot belongs to Zion Williamson, and I honestly think that we could see him climb higher after year three in the NBA. In his rookie season, Zion showed the offensive efficiency that we would expect from a top star in our league, but not necessarily the flash or takeover ability. In year two, once point Zion became a thing, we all became witnesses to what Zion can do as a playmaker, which has the hobby extremely excited. Now, Zion shares the same drawbacks as Trey Young, and perhaps even more so than Trey Young, as 2019 print runs were exponentially higher than anything we've ever seen before. Now, having said that, Zion's thunderous dunks and exciting offensive gameplay make him must-see TV, which is an absolute requirement for the next hobby goat. If Zion can develop a mid-range game, which is also a requirement as the next hobby goat, must be an elite offensively skilled player, then he has the potential to steal the throne and be the next great hobby star. For now, we're just going to have to wait and see. Coming in fourth is Luka Doncic. Luka is ready to take over the league today, like now. The problem is people are now expecting deep playoff runs, MVPs, and chips. So the window on Luka is narrowing as folks are becoming impatient, justified or not. But after seeing him obliterate the Clippers single-handedly despite being eliminated in back-to-back seasons and witnessing the mastery at the offensive end of the court, the sky is the absolute limit for Luka. And he'll be in the contention for the best player in the NBA for the next 10 to 15 years. Whether or not the league decides to promote Luka as the face of the league is something that I'm actually really, really skeptical as. Whether or not the league actually decides to promote Luka is something that I'm actually really skeptical about. Again, in a league predominantly African-American, Luka doesn't necessarily fit the culture from a marketing perspective. He isn't going to see shoe commercials like Jordan, Kobe, or LeBron. He won't be seen with popular pop culture posse. He's probably going to be seen walking around with a smoking hot mom, and for me, that's actually pretty awesome. But for the league, marketing and branding, I'm skeptical. Either way, Luka is arguably one of my top two favorite players in the league, and I'll be rooting for him to take over in full force. Speaking of one of my top two favorite players in the league, coming in at number three is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yep, Giannis. Giannis is ready to take over the league now. The two-time reigning back-to-back MVP, throw in a Defensive Player of the Year award, add a missing add a missing chip to that, and you have all the makings of a hobby superstar. Trust me, if this guy pulls a ring off in Milwaukee, it will be more impressive than any ring LeBron, Kevin Durant, or Steph Curry ever won. The problem is, I'm not sure if it's going to happen because the Brooklyn Nets are absolutely loaded this year, and they will probably be winning two of the next four NBA championships, if not more, stifling any hobby progress that Giannis has. However, if he does pull it off, look out. So, I previously mentioned Steph Curry. He's actually coming in at number two as the next hobby goat. The great thing about Curry is he already has his rings. Three of them, actually. And he is getting a healthy Clay Thompson back in the Western Conference where LeBron is getting older. So tying LeBron James in ring total is actually easier, easier and more feasible than I feel like we all think. Additionally, Curry does a pretty good job appealing to every NBA fan because he's a small guy. He absolutely redefined how the league plays and who can be successful in this league. No longer are NBA talent evaluators focusing on athleticism, which frankly I think is one of the most overrated terms and uses out there in sports. It's just ridiculous. And thank you, Luca, for proving to all the talent evaluators that they were wrong as you've been dominating the league as an unathletic fat white guy from across the pond. So that's a side note. But back to Curry. He absolutely changed the game of basketball. He's extremely likable. He doesn't say too many stupid things. 
and he comes across as a very educated guy extremely marketable and he is must see tv curry is easily a favorite to take over the top spot but curry is not my number one prediction my overall prediction for who is going to take over the hobby goat status is easily kevin durant kevin durant is one of the top three best pure scores the league has ever seen you can throw him into any offense and he immediately averages 28 points per game and you don't even realize that he did it which is actually part of his problem. LeBron is very ball dominant as a point forward who really commands attention. That's good and bad. Good that people see him, bad from an offensive game plan perspective because the offense completely revolves around him. KD, you can sub into any situation and the team keeps chugging away. But regardless, KD stands to win two more chips in the next four years at a minimum with the way the nets are built. Add to the fact that he has all the high-end key rookie cards from previous that previous goats have had, like Topps Chrome, Exquisite, Ultimate Collection, SP Authentic, SPX, Topps, Upper Deck, Bowman Chrome, Ultra, you name it. He has it. It just seems like a natural evolution that he will take over as the premier player in the NBA. Factor in that if the Nets actually do end up facing the Lakers again in the finals, I don't see the Lakers pulling off a victory, which will do wonders for KD's legacy, as he will end up being 3-1 and one against LeBron in the finals, as he currently stands 2-1. and one. And as we look back over time, that does nothing but add to KD's legacy. Now sure, I know many of you are going to say that KD's chips are discounted because he went ring chasing. I honestly don't know how you can say that he went ring chasing and discount those rings without discounting LeBron James's rings, who basically started that trend way back in the day with Miami. But that's a different topic for a different day. So that is my short list of the top eight players who I think that can take over the hobby once LeBron James is finally over. And it kind of looks like that reign, at least in terms of dominating the NBA, is coming to a close with this year's exit. Let me know what you guys think about this list. And is there anybody else in the hobby that you think that I'm missing? Or do you think that none of these guys are going to take over the hobby? And we're going to go into a period that we've never really seen before where the hobby is just going to be a bunch of guys and no one is a clear winner. Either way, let me know what you guys think down below and I'll see you next time.